Welcome back to Coloring Through the Bible. My name is Keegan Harkins and today I want to talk to you about something that often pops up in my head. Why do wicked people succeed when people who are searching for the Lord and trying to live a life that honors Him struggle or fail? It's hard to see the immoral succeed. It's hard to see people who deny the very existence of God become, you know, successful and prosperous when the person who's devoted their entire life for the Lord maybe is is struggling or facing a hardship. And it's really, really tempting to say, God, that's just not fair. Why are you letting them succeed? They don't deserve it. And every time I get that feeling, God always brings me back to Psalms 37. So if you've ever struggled with that, you know, it's not fair, Lord, kind of mentality, I really want to encourage you to go to Psalms 37. It was written by David. So if anybody knows what it's like to say, God, it's not fair, I think it would be David. You know, he was accused of things he didn't do. He was hunted down like a criminal. He, he didn't deserve the treatment that he was getting. He tried really hard to live his life for the Lord. Did he screw up? Of course he did, because you know what? So do we. We are not perfect. And maybe that's the biggest thing of this. It's easy for us to say, we deserve it more because we've given our lives to the Lord, because we're on that side of that choice. But do we forget sometimes that God loves that horrible sinner that, that we're trying to judge and condemn? He loves them as much as he loves us. And it isn't our job or our place to say that they deserve less than we do because we don't deserve what God gives us. And it's hard to realize that. It's hard to think of that. But the truth is that it's God's place to judge. It's God's place to say who succeeds and who fails. And we don't understand his motives. Sometimes success maybe leads to the place where that person is going to give their heart to the Lord. We don't know. And also, we live in a fallen world. They honor things that are deplorable, things that are wicked and harmful. They lift up, and we're called to be different. So Psalms 37 really helps us with all of these struggles. And I want to share just a few verses from it, but I, I would really encourage you to read the whole chapter the next time you're having that, that's not fair, Lord, kind of moment. So verses 1 and 2 says, Do not fret because of evil men, or be envious of those who do wrong, for like grass they will soon wither, like green plants they will soon die away. And I love the imagery of that because it really helps me understand it. One thing about fretting, I love that word. It's not a word that we say anymore. It's just kind of like a grandma word. It's not, not I never say, you know, stop fretting. Um, but it's kind of like, I just picture this person just like wringing their hands and, and, and consuming their thoughts with, that's just not fair, that's just not fair. And when you're doing that, when you're letting your thoughts be consumed with the evil person or what's happening that is an injustice, our eyes become focused on this evil thing instead of focused on God. And that right there is the first sadness that happens when we start to stress over when things happen and people succeed that we don't think that they should. What is most important is that we keep our eyes on Christ. And that's why I want to skip down to verse 6 because I love verse 6. It is so highlighted in my Bible and like circled and starred. It says, He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. And the thing that really speaks to me in this verse is, He will make your righteousness shine. Not us. It doesn't say that God will give you a platform to explain yourself. I mean, have you ever had somebody gossiping about you and it wasn't truthful? Have you ever had somebody talking about you and it's they're portraying you in a way that's just not the truth or giving your, your motives this impure quality that that's not what you meant, that's not what your heart was, and you want to just like stand up and shout and say, that's not true, that's not who I am. God says, I will do that. Don't worry about it. 
Don't worry when wicked people succeed. Don't worry when wicked people talk things about you that aren't true. I will make your righteousness shine. What the thing that jumps out at me as well in this verse is you got to have righteousness for God to make shine. If we're focusing our lives on other people, we're not working on our right relationship with God. If we are walking the way that God wants us to do, then we're focusing on Him. We're focusing on having that right relationship with God, and He's going to make that evident. We don't need to defend ourselves. We don't need to rise to the occasion, to join every fight that's offered, to come to the defense of our good name. God will do that. We just need to do what the Bible tells us we should do. We need to love our enemies. We need to use our gifts and our talents to give God glory and to help our fellow human beings. We need to live lives that honor the Lord and coincide with what God tells us we should do in his book. One couple last verses I want to share with you. Verses 9 and 10 says, For evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while more and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. And this is kind of our promise. We know that the Lord is coming again. I don't know if it's going to be in our lifetime. I don't know if it's going to be in a thousand years. No one knows. But we have to just let it go. I know that sounds so corny. And everybody's going to want to like break into song for, for singing that, you know, let it go song. But that's the truth. God knows what he's doing. And there will come a time when there'll be no more second chances for the people who've turned their hearts away from the Lord. And that actually should make us pretty sad. Sometimes we want we want them to be punished for the things that they're doing. You know, we want them to, to get a little taste of their own medicine. But that is a purely selfish, selfish and sinful way of thinking. Because before we gave our lives to the Lord, we were in the same boat. We are only saved by the grace of God, and we have all of eternity to place our hopes in. No matter what happens in this world, no matter how we struggle or how things don't turn out the way we wanted them to, or how, you know, it's just not fair, we have eternity to look forward to. And that's perfection, and that's joy, and no more sorrow, and no more pain, and no more injustices. But we should be sad that not everyone has that to look forward to. That should be our motivation. So the next time, like me, you struggle with the fact that the people who are seeking to harm other people are getting all the limelight, they're getting all the accolades, they're getting all the success. And the people who are trying their best to live according to God's word are being you know, ridiculed and made fun of and gossiped about and have, you know, everything is in their way and trying to destroy them in their path. We can get really frustrated with that. But this is God's story. These are his children. Even the ones that are the most vile of sinners, they're God's children. And he wants them to give their hearts to him. Same way he wanted us to give our hearts to him. So we need to stop fretting, we need to stop stressing, we need to stop focusing on things that aren't ours to focus on. If we keep our eyes on the Lord, if we live our lives in a righteous way, let God handle all that details, then we're going to have a little bit less stress and no, life is not going to become easier and no, it's not going to all of a sudden become fair. But we have a future to hold on to. And we need to trust that even though we don't understand why God allows some things, why he orchestrates different situations, we need to just trust that he knows what he's doing. He doesn't need our input. He doesn't need our help. And one day we will be spending eternity with him. And none of these things that we are worrying about now are going to matter. So I hope that you've been encouraged. David is always my huge encouragement when I feel like things aren't fair or when I screw up and fall. Just to, to be able to turn to his life and see how this was a man after God's own heart and he struggled the same way I do and he fell the same way I fall. But the difference is he chose 
to correct his behavior. He chose to say, but I'm not going to worry about that, Lord. I'm going to focus on you and I'm going to praise you because even though this world isn't going the way I think it should, I know that you're in control. So I hope that that's been some help to you. I would really encourage you to read Psalms 37 all in its entirety because it's a great chapter. Um, until we see each other again, have a truly blessed day.